To dig into what uh, Trinidad and Tobago is doing to conserve and protect its biodiversity, we've got with us an environmental biologist, uh, Julia Smith. Uh, we also have with us biodiversity specialist, Alina Dempewolf. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to the Morning Brew. And happy Mother Earth Day to both of you. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you very much. All right, I want to start with the biodiversity specialist. Um, we have been hearing reports of just how much uh, we have affected the planet, so many species going extinct before we could even begin to understand their importance here on Mother Earth. Uh, why is it so important to protect and conserve biodiversity, Lena Dempervolf? So biodiversity is basically all of the plants, animals, and microorganisms on Earth. So it's the sum of all living things. And um, while they have an intrinsic uh, right to live and be here just like everyone else and just like humans, uh, there are lots of issues involved in, um, in maintaining biodiversity. Biodiversity is important for our survival because humans benefit from the goods and services that are produced by biodiversity. Mm -hmm. So having lots of different species, having a lots of diversity in the organisms that are out there provide us with things like food, shelter, raw materials, um, and some more abstract things like oxygen, um, land uh, stabilization, soil stabilization, and that sort of thing. So biodiversity does a lot for humans and a lot for maintaining uh, humans as well as um, just existing and having a right to exist by themselves. Mm. Uh, one of the things that they've discovered is that there are health consequences to biodiversity loss and a change yes, and we didn't even realize that and we may be destroying uh, the keys to ha having us uh, live long and healthy lives and even uh, destroying diseases that we've been battling with for a long time and we don't even realize that we're doing that. Yes, for sure. So, um, I mean, the current COVID-19 situation illustrates that, that perfectly. Uh, the way that humans encroach on the habitat of uh, plants and animals brings humans closer into contact with these plants and animals and increases the chance of uh, transmission of disease uh, from, from sources that were previously unknown. So there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know. The thing about biodiversity is as well that, uh, yes, we, we know what's we know about some of the species that exist, but we most certainly don't know about all. There's a lot of stuff that is out there that we don't know yet, and that includes microorganisms. And the more we destroy the habitat of um, organisms, the more likely it is that, that these kinds of microorganisms come in contact with humans as well. So that's, uh, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Julia Smith, um, land uh, degradation is one of the major issues that we also look at on uh, this day. Uh, the fact that um, with climate change happening, we see a lot of coastal erosion taking place uh, with uh, the increase in storms, more places flooding badly. Let's talk about the land degradation issue and the challenge that we face here, particularly in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, well, land degradation primarily refers to how we manage land sustainably or in our jargon, it's called sustainable land management. So primarily, we, we are signatory to a United Nations Convention that deals with land degradation, and it's called, it's a bit of a mouthful, it's called the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. Mm -hmm. So what we, one of our main obligations under this convention is that we have to develop a national action program. And that is a framework that through which we, through which the government would seek to advance the agenda of sustainable land management across all sectors of our economy. And as you would know, land is the platform and it underpins everything from our agriculture to our biodiversity. And it's a big, it's a big influence on being resilient to adverse climate change. Let's look at that national action plan that you referenced a moment ago. What exactly are we implementing from that plan to ensure that we are managing our land resources in a more sustainable way? Uh, beg your pardon, I appreciate if you could just repeat that. Yes, I'm asking about the national the action plan. What are the key things are we doing from that uh, national action plan um, to, to, to ensure that we manage our land use and resources more sustainably? Uh, 
Uh, hello? All right, I think we, we seem to be having um, a technical issue. So I'll yeah. go across to Lena. Lena, what are we doing to protect and conserve our biodiversity here in Trinidad and Tobago? Um, so there's several things. So we are signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, and this is an international agreement um, that aims to reduce the loss of biodiversity and increase the uh, amount of the, the equality of benefit sharing uh, between different people and different groups of, of people uh, that have access to these benefits. And um, as part of this, uh, every country is required to create a national biodiversity strategy action plan. And we have revised this in 2018, and there's currently a committee that is overseeing the implementation of this. Mm -hmm. And um, that should go until 2022. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, the negotiations are ongoing for revising uh, targets for the CBD, um, for 2030 and 2050, and that's the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Uh, unfortunately, COVID has um, put a little bit of a, a spoke in the wheel in that, and we couldn't have any physical meetings, so it's, it's been taking some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's in the works. And um, In terms of the plan itself, what is one key thing that is being implemented now that citizens can actually see, and when they see this activity, they say, oh yes, this is how we are conserving our biodiversity and protecting it here in TNT. Well, um, I suppose we can look at the protected areas that we have. Uh, recently, there has been the IFPAMTT project, which has looked at pilot protected areas and creating management plans for this and aiming at improving the management of these protected areas. So there have been, this was a four year project, there have been considerable strides being taken towards um, biodiversity conservation in these protected areas through that project. We also have some interesting things coming up with BioReach, which is looking at agroecological components and the BestNet project on pollination that's supposed to start soon. Uh, so there's some things in the works that we are, we're looking forward to. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's see if Julius is, is able to join us once more. Uh, Julius, are you back with us? Can you yes, hear me I now? Am. Yes, yes so, so the National Action Plan in terms of um, you know, helping us to manage our land resources properly in a more sustainable way, what's one key thing that we're doing now that the population could look at and say, okay, I understand why we have to make these changes and adjustments because we need to, we need to manage our land resources better? All right, well, like, there are a couple of things. Uh, to begin with, uh, our attitude towards land management uh, requires a little bit of behavioral and attitudinal t change. So we're seeking to shift the perception of, of uh, land being an a infinite resource because we're a small island developing state. So that would mean that land is ver a very finite commodity. We're not continental, we're not Brazil. So if, if land becomes degraded, uh, it's not as though we could move on to an, a, a, another fresh productive piece of land because, because of, of our insular nature. So one of the aims under this project is to institute a program called land degradation neutrality, where degraded lands are restored or rehabilitated to a similar level of productivity that they had before they were degraded. In this way, uh, it would compensate for our developmental needs because we have to build roads, bridges, buildings, etc. And those things consume land resources. So as we consume land resources, we are trying to compensate for that by rehabilitating degraded lands. And an example of which could be, for example, would be quarries, where as acreages become consumed, as they excav excavate for aggregate, you can then revegetate those abandoned acreages or those consumed acreages to bring them back to a similar level of productivity. And that has a number of benefits in terms of restoring the quality and nature of the soil and, and uh, the stability of land. And as you know, the stability of land and soil is very much linked to things like flooding and landslides and uh, other deleterious effects. All right, so we've gotten a, a quick picture of uh, what we here in Trinidad and Tobago are doing to protect our, our land resources as well as conserve our biodiversity. I've got to say thank you so much for spending time with us this morning, Lena and Julius. Happy Mother Earth Day to both of you and may your projects continue to be successful because you're leaving a powerful legacy with them. Thank you. Thank you very much.